Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Friday, February 2nd, and this is your morning prayer. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, we get into Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, uh, chapters 1 through 4. And um, you'll, you'll notice um, right away <laughs> in the first uh, four chapters here that, um, for the most part, this letter takes a, a different tone than the first one, with uh, the first letter being a little bit more direct and, um, well, law-focused, you know, coming right at them and saying, look, this is what's wrong, and this is what you need to stop doing, <laughs> and this is, this is what needs to stop right here. Um, but the second letter is, is a little bit more, um, you know, if, if you want to broadly characterize the first letter as more law, you would look at this one and say, okay, I'm definitely getting more gospel here. And, and for the most part, this is true. Um, we'll get a little bit more uh, towards the end where Paul will, will bring some things out. The tone kind of shifts a little bit. But um, he is approaching them in, in, in a different way. And you, we, well, I mean, you can understand, especially as you're, as you're reading these first four chapters and you're getting a feel for what is, what might be going on here is how, you know, Paul has, you know, well, he's used the law to do what the law does. The law kills you. <laughs> um, the law strikes you dead. The law shows you your sin and, and basically sets out before you like, this is the will of God. This is what God desires from you, expects from you, demands from you. Even if, if you are to be his child, this, you know, if you, or if you want to be holy, this is what it means to be holy. And so um, when we are faced with the law in that capacity, um, it strikes us dead because we can't fulfill it. We can't do it. Um, and it, and it puts to death all of our, um, ideas that, that we can accomplish this, that we are able to do it ourselves. And so what is left for us is to cry out, Lord have mercy. And so then the gospel comes and makes alive, brings you to life, you know, breathes life into you and, and announces how, um, Jesus has accomplished this for you that for you, he has done it and now applies all of its benefits to you. Uh, forgiveness, grace, mercy, becoming a child of God, eternal life, all of this. So um, it, the second Corinthians, um, for the most part, can be seen as, as doing that um, that full work of, of the word of God, where, where the law has come and has wounded them because it, they needed to be convicted. And now the gospel is, is a, applying that, um, that, balm that um, um, healing that they need uh, to not be lost in despair, you know, and, and, oh, we are such terrible people and look, look at what we've done. Woe is me kind of stuff. And to say like, yes, <laughs> look at what you've done, but no, but, but even more so look to what Christ has done to cover you, to, to forgive all of that and to bring you out of that and into this new life where you're now going to walk in the ways of God. Um, not out of compulsion, not because you think it's going to save you, but because um, you are rejoicing in it and are delighted that you can, or at least are, are able to um, to do so for um, for the sake of your neighbor and not for the sake of your salvation. So, um, so you definitely get that in the first four chapters. Um, you know, he he talks about boasting in them a bit, which you know you th think back to First Corinthians and you think, whoa, <laughs> there wasn't a lot to boast about. Um, but clearly, there was, um, you know, there was repentance on their part that that they, while there are still problems um, and still issues, they are they seem to be making you know that attempt to to turn things around. Um, Paul mentions how he, you know, he, uh, he doesn't, he didn't want to make another painful visit. So he had visited them, uh, um, apparently after the first letter and it, it was difficult, um, because there was a lot of work to be done. Um, so he does kind of note that it was a, a painful visit. And, and so he, there was a plan to come visit them again. Um, but it just, it, it, he wasn't sure. And, and, but then he said, you know, I, I do want to come to you, but, but to, to rejoice with you. 
Um, and there's a lot of talk about, you know, affliction and uh, the gospel and how, um, what, what, how we endure infliction and, and the, the gospel that is, is brings the glory of, of Christ and how wonderful it is. There's, there's a lot going on in just these first four chapters. So, um, it's difficult to kind of pick just one thing or a couple areas to look at. Um, one of the things that kind of jumps out to me when I, when I read this is right at the uh, beginning, uh, verse, ch- sorry, chapter one, verses three through five. Where Paul writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, God of all comfort. And here we go. Who comforts us in all of our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction, with the comfort that which we ourselves are comforted by God. Uh, For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. And that always has struck me. um, Because in in the past, uh, when I was younger, you know, I would often look to the things that, um, the times of affliction, the, the, the things that either were, um, that happened to me that were kind of out of my hands or the things that I brought upon myself and would, you know, ask God repeatedly in prayer to like remove these things from me, to, to make this better, to stop, stop this affliction, you know, to, to take this pain away, to, to, um, you know, to relieve me from it, uh, especially the things that I, I were out of my hands. Um, you know, to a degree I could look at the things that I caused and be like, well, yeah, that's on me. Um, but to the things that were completely beyond my control, that, that were, um, not a product of, of my, um, activity, it was just like, well, why God, you know, why, why won't you take this from me? Why am I suffering like this? I've, you know, come to you repeatedly asking you to remove this. And, um, you know, it really wasn't until later on after a few years, really, um, that I began to understand this passage, uh, where, you know, okay, he, he comforts us all in our affliction, which, you know, over time I I would see, you know, how he did bring comfort, even though the affliction was still there and I'm still dealing with the effects of it. But the uh, part where he says here is he, he comforts us so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction and realizing that, you know, the, the difficult thing for us sometimes is how God will allow afflictions of various shapes and kinds and and whatnot. And we often wonder, well, why, what is the use of this? Why, why is, why won't you take this from me? Um, and finding that more often than not, it's because there is somebody out there (laughs) who, you know, that, that you don't know, maybe, or maybe you do know, but there's somebody out there who is afflicted in the same way. And, um, and God will often use us who have gone through that same affliction to bring comfort to them. Um, not because we have gotten it right, not because we did this, you know, handled it the right way or, um, well, maybe possibly, I suppose, but more often than not, because we endured it. Because we experience what it is to go through that, but go through that with God, to have faith and endure that. Because that's the key difference that a lot of people don't get it. You know, obviously those outside the church is, you know, the things that we are afflicted with, the things that we suffer are not by and large unusual. You know, they're things that a lot of people suffer. A lot of people go through, Um, you know, a probably a, a quick, easy example would be like, you know, going through a, a divorce. Okay. Um, or, or being, uh, um, you know, either you yourself going through it or you being like a child who is caught in, in the middle of that. And, you know, we look at something like that and we say, well, divorce is very common. You know, every, well, not everybody, but well, everybody has some kind of connection with it. Either they themselves, somebody they know, somebody close to them. So everybody knows divorce. But they're, um, the people outside the faith, well, they know what it's like to go through divorce, to be affected by divorce, and that's it. You know, they've had to chart their own path through that, to find their own comfort, and likely having a very difficult time doing so. Um, the Christian, on the other hand, has gone through it, but they've gone through it with the hope of Jesus Christ. Not saying that it was easy, 
not saying that it was um, somehow less painful, but having that rock solid foundation and that, that, um, that assurance that though this is, you know, truly an affliction, um, God is with you, that God will bring you through this, the, the promise that God will never leave you. Um, and so you as a Christian going, have, having that while going through it can now show um, and, and comfort others with, with what God has done for you and to share that with them and to show them a, a better way. You know, that like, yes, you can, you can sympathize, you can empathize, you, you can understand perfectly what they're going through. Um, and how did you, how did you do it? Well, I don't know, but for the grace of God. Okay. And what does that mean? Well, okay. Let me, let me tell you. Um, and it offers us an opportunity to comfort those who are in the same affliction as we are, or that we've been through. Um, and so that's, um, you know, that, that's the answer usually whenever I uh, have questions about, you know, well, why is God allowing this? Why, why is he bringing this back to me? And usually the answer is for the sake of my neighbor, for the sake of somebody else. <laughs> um, and it's, it's like, wow, okay, because God is always directing me to love the people around me. So I, I look at situations and say, well, how, <laughs> no matter how good or bad they are, um, I, and see, well, what is, how is God directing me to my neighbor in this? How can I love my neighbor through this? Um, so, yeah, verses uh, three through five in chapter one there are really good stuff. And and here I am, that almost at 12 minutes here, <laughs> and I've only covered one little bit of this, so um, I apologize. There's a lot more in these first four chapters that um, is just truly great. Um, so uh, enjoy these chapters today, and uh, um, if you have any questions about anything else in this, please let me know, and uh, and I will address those. But uh, yeah, this is this beginning of of First Corinthians here is, is some good stuff. Uh, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians. Sorry. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angels be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Friday. Hope you have a great day. Hope your week is uh, tying up well and uh, you're able to look, go into this weekend uh, restful uh, or getting the rest you need. So uh, have a great day, and I will be back at it tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.